Alright, hi guys, welcome to Jazz Tutorials. This week we're making an Instagram filter tutorial. Now I know what you're thinking, are we going to be in Instagram or Photoshop? Well, we're not really going to use anything on Instagram, we're just making a effect that looks like an Instagram photo. Um, now, I know some of you might classify this as a beginner's tutorial, but I myself do not because of the fact we're using a bunch of random, a bunch of filters and lots of new layer adjustments, and I just don't think beginners can handle that at this time. I mean, as they progress from beginners, surely they can, but I just think this would be classified as a regular tutorial. But if you do think it's beginners, that's fine, that's your opinion, but this is just my opinion. So let's just move on and get started. Okay, so um, automatically open your photo. Um, and any photo you want to use is fine, but keep in mind, your photo that you're using will have a different outcome than mine because you'll have a different color scheme and hues and all that stuff in your photo. So as you notice, I have a curves adjustment layer already put on my photo. I will show you what I'm using in the curves. So add your curves adjustment layer, and within your curves adjustment layer, you want to adjust the reds, the blues, and the greens. And you want to make a shape similar to mine, but keep in mind, if it's going to contrast your photo too much, you can back it down a bit. So just use this as a guiding tool. I would show you my numbers, but I feel as though if I do, that it's not going to be the same for your photo. So I want to keep you on your own page. So go ahead and now adjust the green to this lovely shape here. And then with your blue, make a shape similar to this one as well. Once you have a um, color scheme such as mine, or something like mine, as you see in the preview, you're good to go. Now we're going to add a new layer above this and we're going to make it a magenta color. So grab your colors and grab a magenta like color. Any magenta hue is fine as long as it's magenta. Well magenta is its own hue. Wow. Yeah. So color that magenta and then you're going to drop the opacity down to 20% and you're going to use soft light for your blend mode. And that just kind of contrasts it and gives it more of a lovely color scheme. Okay, now we're going to do something really cool. So go ahead and select your entire like layer. It doesn't matter what layer you're on now. Um, just layer one's fine. And then you're going to go over here to edit and you're going to select copy merged. And then you're going to paste whatever you copied onto your layer two. Boom. Which is basically, it's your, it's your bottom layer. Now, you know, I know what you're thinking, why couldn't I just do a control J? Well, yeah, it, you could, but I just think this is an easier way to do it, so, yeah. Alright, now go to Filter, and we're going to add a Gaussian Blur onto this layer. And I'm going to use 11.5 for mine, um, okay. And then you're going to grab a soft round eraser brush of large size, depending upon your um, canvas size. And you're going to want to add a lovely uh, mask onto this. So click that little lovely square with a circle in it. And you're going to mask out just the parts that you don't want to have showing, which basically would be your subject. So in your photo, mask out the subject of your photo. Alright, and that's what mine looks like. Sweet deal. I like that. I think you should too. Okay, now we're going to add more effects to this. So add a new layer above this. Alright, now this one we're going to add some cool like red dots. So grab a red color of choice, any red hue will do, as long as it's not too dark, must be kind of, make it fairly bright. I'll choose that one there. And with a large soft round brush, just dab some dots anywhere within your photo. And that's fine. Okay, then you're going to select your layer and make it to linear dodge. And then your opacity should be 70%. No, too much. Okay, there we go. I like it. Alright, now we're going to make a new layer above this because we're going to add a vignette. Now, most of you know what a vignette is by now, so I'm not going to really go into detail about that, but you, it's a black with a fading in. Yeah. Alright, so select the entire layer by doing Command A. And now you need to have your selection tool selected, which is basically your marquee tool. And with the marquee tool selected now, right click your layer and select stroke. And you want to fill this with black. So make it a black hundred a black stroke with a hundred pi hundred pixels. 
PX, Pixels, whatever. Same dang thing. Okay. Woohoo! And now, we need to make the vignette. How do we make the vignette? Oh! Hang on a bit. Go to filter. We're going to add a Gaussian blur. And you want to put the settings all the way to the freaking end. Yes. I said that. Maximize it. So, like, yeah. Somewhere close to the end of your, of your line. Boom. I like that. Okay. Oh, what did I just do? I don't want to print. Whoa. Set this layer to soft light. And we're going to have 70 for our opacity. All right, sweet deal. And you're probably thinking, well, where's the freaking vignette? Well, it's in there. And it's just it's not really too showing. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to make another new layer above this. So many layers. So little time. All right, grab a big, a soft, a large soft round brush and take your white and put it right in the dead center. Boom. I'll put mine right there. And set this layer to soft light. And boom. Yay! And you don't even and you don't even have to change your opacity on this one because you're good to go. All right, one final layer to add this awesome touch to it, and make sure this layer is a black background. Then we're gonna add some noise. Go to filter noise, add noise. I'm using one seventeen point seventy two percent with uniform selected and monochromatic. Mon monochromatic. Jesus, can't even say shit. Then we're going to add a slight Gaussian blur just to contrast the lovely particles in this photo. Don't make it too obnoxious. Maybe like, I'd say 5 would be okay. 5 to 10. And you're going to set this layer to screen. But you're going to drop your opacity down to 15%. All right, and um, yeah, that's it. There you go. Pretty radical, isn't it? Yeah, buddy. So that's kind of how you make a cool, like, uh, retro style, I guess, Instagram filter in Photoshop. Um, yeah, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, could I make this into, like, an action? Um, I'm sure you could um, if you had it recording. Um, if you wanted to record this as an action, I bet you could. I haven't done it, obviously, but um, I don't see why you couldn't. It would make sense. So, give it a shot. Give it a whirl. See what happens. Um, so, this is how, how you make that. And if you wanted to really make it officially an Instagram photo, you could grab your crop tool and crop it into a square. And then be like, Instagram, but I'm not. I like it the way it is. So... Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was cool enough for you. Um, and for those of us in America, happy Memorial Day weekend and Memorial Day. Show your veterans some love um, and all that stuff. So thanks for watching again, and please like, comment, subscribe. I love new people. Team Awesome is awesome. Pe it's filled with awesome people, and I know if you're an awesome person, you want to be a part of this awesomeness. We're going to bring this awesomeness global. We're going worldwide, guys. Worldwide awesomeness with Team Awesome. All right, bye. Yeah.